Thank you again, everybody. Thank you for uh, your patience today. Uh, welcome today to the 34th um, annual Peer Mediation Conference, Adventures in Peer Mediation. Uh, the Peer Mediation Conference has been bringing together youth peer mediators ages uh, eight to 18 years old for over 30 years. Uh, this is the first year the conference has gone virtual uh, to connect peer mediators uh, around Hawaii and others aspiring to develop their own peer mediation program. And so far, I can definitely confirm that we've actually been connecting peer mediators and mediators uh, around the world as well. So it has been a wonderful uh, surprise. And thank you so much to our audience. Uh, my name is Jose Barzola from the Matsunaga Institute for Peace at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. This year's peer mediation conference is brought to you as a collaborative of 22 different uh, organizations around Hawaii that support this conference that is spread out throughout the month of April. Uh, the peer mediation conference consists of an open panel, 16 skill workshops, and a closing panel. You can definitely learn more about all the events at the Matsunaga Institute.eventbrite.com. Uh, you can also see a lot of all the events are being recorded and you can catch uh, a recording of the events um, at the Matsunaga Institute YouTube channel. You can just look up Matsunaga Institute on YouTube. Uh, today's events will focus on the skills workshop on what is your conflict style with uh, Magdalena Jones, uh, Christina Pacheco, and Shelly Andrews will also be joining us today. Uh, they're all from the Kalua High School Peer Mediators Program. Um, thank you for joining us to learn about peer mediation skills. Uh, if you ever wonder why people deal with problems, problems or drama in different ways, some people may get really angry and bossy. Others might want to find a peaceful resolution. Others want to just ignore the problem and hope it goes away. Well, knowing exactly how you and your friends handle conflict can help you resolve issues better and become a better mediator. And to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to our Kailua High School Peer Mediators Program. I believe, uh, is Christina going to take us away today? Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming oh, to the conference. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send the link for the Jamboard that you guys will need for actually this slideshow that's coming on and I'm going to start sharing my screen. Yeah. Okie dokie. So now that everyone has their Jamboard up, Maggie, go ahead and you can begin our. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you guys do want to follow along with our presentation, you can go to the PEP website, which um, the URL is up on the screen. Um, and you can scroll to the bottom and look at the Lua High School pe um, PEP handbook. Um, and oh. make sure to put feedback into our Jamboard, please, so that we can see what you guys think. Yeah. OK, so start off. We want to start off with a little bit of an icebreaker um, because conflict styles are used like um, all the time when we interact with any sort of thing, no matter if it's big or small. Um, think of a conflict that you recently experienced. How did you cope with it? How was that like process? That sort of thing. So just like take a second. Yeah. Like for example, I have three brothers and I face a lot of conflicts with them, especially about like what kind of show or something we want to watch. So it definitely is interesting to see um, if someone's more of an aggressive person about what they would like in a situation. Um, but we coped with it through communication. So what we're doing right now is learning about different types so it can help us better to communicate. Cool. I think we can move on. Yeah. So the best way to communicate things, whether it be your feelings, just like through a conflict, um, is to make an I statement and use that um, to make sure that the other person understands exactly how you're feeling so that they can get to the point where they understand why. Um, so I feel is taking responsibility for your own feelings um, when stating the paper, that's the problem, because and then what is it? about the behavior or its consequences that um, you would object to, you don't like, that makes you feel that way really. Um, and then I would like the positive outcome you would like to see happen instead. Um, that part's really important because if you forget that, it can kind of lead into a bigger argument because you'd be um, ending with the behavior that you don't like instead of, hey, here's a solution, here's how we can both move on in the situation. 
yeah, I personally use a lot of I feel statements in my household and they're very useful. I also posted in the chat that on the Jamboard, you guys can actually go ahead and post your answers if you want to give an example of using an I statement in a situation situation where you experience conflict and what a statement might look like for that specific conflict. So we'll give a few seconds to go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next slide. Absolutely. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Are we good, Miss Christina? Yes, sorry, and let me go back. There you go. Okay, I just want to make sure. So um, in mediation, we ask, how would you like to see this problem solved? Um, it is important that we kind of separate the, both the parties involved and ask this question, because sometimes the answers can be very different and we want to make sure that through the mediation, we're able to reach a different point. Um, so what would you like to see blank do to make that happen? What would you like to see the other person do or um, um, what kind of reaction would you like to see when you try to instigate whatever you want to happen? Um, and what are you willing to do to make that happen? Whether it be as simple as asking for a solution or just talking about it, or if you have to do some work to um, make something happen, like say the conflict is between two friends that want to be in a group together, but one person doesn't really want to do the work, then you really have to get to the point, okay, well, it's more of a compromise you're gonna have to do this to get this out of it and just work together to resolve the situation. Yeah. Okay, so part of what we did was a online quiz that actually finds out what conflict animals we are. So in the chat, we posted a link to the following quiz and I will share my screen to go ahead and actually fill out the quiz just as you guys are. So that way we can, you know, see how it's done. And then you guys can find out what animal I am. And then um, Maggie will go ahead and continue to talk about what the animals symbolize and what they mean. Okay. All righty, if everyone can see that, I can get a thumbs up so I can see that they can see my quiz. Okie dokie. Oh, I don't know so. if you want to see on the Jamboard, just sorry, somebody did respond on oh. using I statements. Um, I feel unhappy when you shout to get your point across because I get upset when people shout at me. I would like to talk calmly and figure out a way forward that works for both of us. So thanks for sharing that. That's great. I was trying to think of one. That's a good example. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay, wait. Uh, it is on slide seven of the Jamboard. There's a little post-it note. Yeah, we went a little bit backwards. Okay, so going back to the quiz, I'm gonna share my screen so that way you guys can follow along, at least for me filling out the quiz and you guys can fill it out at your own pace as well. Um, okay. Oh, I thought, okay, cool. So choose some values and choose a value statement. And how do I view conflict? I uh, view conflict as something that happens. Select a personal strength. I think my strength is calm. Select something you need to work on. I think being more vocal. When someone approaches you with a conflict, I Mm. 
I would say not hide, maybe withdraw. Select a phrase that best matches how you handle conflict. Okay, avoiding turtle is what I got. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop sharing, Maggie. I'm gonna present again and you can explain what the different animals mean. Someone else got avoiding turtle too. <laughs> okay, hold on. Where did it go? Here we go. Share. One owl. <laughs> okay, so moving on. So now that once you guys have finished the quiz and you guys are entering, um, so we have an avoiding turtle, we have an owl, another owl. Go ahead and continue to post it either on the Jamboard or in the chat so that we can talk about it. And Maggie's going to go into explaining what each animal means. Also got a teddy bear. Okay, so the importance of that exercise is recognizing what kind of animal you're synonymous with um, in conflict styles. So um, if you got the turtle, that's like it said, the avoiding turtle. You more um, withdraw from conflict. I don't care. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't want to get involved. Trying to stay out of a situation more than um, go either way or resolve or anything. Um, the shark is very um, forceful, like more of that aggressive person and tries to make opponents accept um, his or her solution. Listen to me, I have the best idea. I don't like your idea. Um, I only like mine. Let's stick with what I had. My idea is fine the way it is. Just, yeah, not willing to compromise as much. The teddy bear uh, wants to avoid conflict altogether, tries to build harmony in the group. That's okay. We need to get along. Everything will be all right. Um, one of my brothers is like this, and he tends to um, definitely say like, oh, can't we just move on from this? Can't we just be a good family and have fun doing something like this, which does unify everyone, but it is also avoiding the conflict. The fox um, is all about compromises, giving up part of his or her, her goals while persuading others to give up part of theirs. So let's listen to all the ideas first and find a solution we can all live with to find a compromise. Um, then the owl, which is at the bottom of the list, but is very important, um, views conflict as problems to be solved. The owl confronts the problem seeking solutions that will satisfy everyone involved instead of forcing everyone to give up something or trying to argue that your point's the best. Um, and we'll say something like, okay, here's the problem. Let's find a creative way to find a win-win for everyone involved. Um, well, there are tons of different aspects in each type that are important. For example, the turtle, you might know when to have a certain response like, I don't know, or maybe I am open to something. The shark, you do wanna be assertive with your rights and your ideas. Um, teddy bear, you can't avoid conflict and building harmony and wanting everyone to get along in the end is very important. Um, and then of course, compromises are gonna pretty much end up with that win-win situation. But the owl is, has a lot of those um, aspects and they're pretty positive in conflict. Yeah. Cool. So um, like the, I was saying before, <laughs> sorry, the um, kind of high um, up in the degrees of cooperativeness and assertiveness, the kind of ideal is the owl because you're searching for a, um, solution that meets um, everyone's needs, which is very similar to the fox, but the fox also might be more done with cooperativeness because they want to give something up, you want to give something up, but you have to um, do it a specific way. And then of course the teddy bear can be more cooperative, but they could also um, be playing down the conflict or maybe someone else could be more angry about it, especially if there's someone like the shark, which of course is going to be more um, competitive, authoritative, command, forcing a solution, even if it's not the best one. Um, and it will really put down the other person because it's more about just what they think. Um, and then the turtle, it's low in cooperativeness because they're withdrawing and very low in assertiveness because even if they have a belief, they're gonna wanna avoid the situation more than address that. Yeah.
Okay, so um, on our Jamboard as well, we have one more question. It says, have you ever taken on another conflict animal role? Add a check mark to next to all the conflict animals that you have used in the past. So I see there's a check mark for the turtle, a check mark for the shark. Go ahead and take a few seconds to go ahead and put a check mark next to the one that you, uh, you might have used in the past based off of what um, Maggie was explaining. Perfect, so I see a couple turtles, I see a shark, a couple of teddy bears and fox as well. Let me resend the link for the Jamboard, hold on. There you go, we are on slide number six. So again, the question is, have you ever taken on another conflict animal role? Add a check mark next to the all the um, all of the conflict animals you've used in the past. So we have quite a few, quite a few of turtles, the shark, teddy bear, fox, and the owl. So very good variety. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, there's a short little video that we can watch. <laughs> What is it about conflict that makes it so difficult to deal with and how come good people can turn into such monsters in the face of conflict? The most common way of dealing with conflict is to avoid it. Some people walk away, others get really upset, wind themselves up and attack, and others just get sick or go on stress leave. In fact, it's amazing what people will do in order to avoid conflict and the emotional stress that comes with it. There is a very clever saying that goes like this, Denial is not a river in Egypt. Denial is, however, one of the most common problems when it comes to resolving conflict. When confronted with a tense or difficult conflict, too many people smooth it over, bury their head in the sand, and the conflict goes on for another one, two, or three weeks, months, or even years in some cases. I want to introduce you to a definition of conflict and then give you a pathway for the resolution of conflict. Before I do, I want to say this. For some people, even the word conflict means warfare, dead bodies and blood on the streets. And it's very common for women and men to see anything less than that as not being in conflict at all. So this is a definition that starts at a very low level because most conflict starts out as very small upsets and builds and grows into a full-scale battle. So here's the definition. Conflict exists when one person has a need of another and that need is not being met. Now, don't be fooled by the simplicity of this definition. The resolution of conflict starts from here and the first step is to express the need. The second step is to find out if the need can or cannot be met. If the need can be met, then we have resolution. If it's a no, then we negotiate to resolve the conflict or we go into the management of conflict. So here's the problem. Most people go straight from having an unmet need into the management of conflict, bypassing step one and step two because they are afraid and don't talk to the people who can do something about it. And that's not pretty. In fact, it gets quite ugly. So here's what the management of conflict looks like. Sulking, withdrawing, getting sick, the silent treatment, backstabbing, gossiping, shouting, blocking, being aggressive and getting angry. So the resolution of conflict starts with expressing your unmet need and then finding out if your unmet need can or cannot be met. If your conflict has escalated to the stage where it's too tough or sensitive or difficult to handle, then you really need to think seriously about involving a neutral third party to help you mediate the dispute and we can help you out with that. For more information, please call me, Jeff Muir, on 1300-555-635 or download the Conflict Resolution Survival guide for business leaders. We offer you a free confidential telephone consultation to help you work out what to do next. The cost of conflict is too high. So before it gets any worse, call me now. Okay, that 
that's our video. It's a cute little short video uh, just talking about conflict resolution. So obviously it said to state your needs and then if your needs can be met. If not, then seeking out help from a you know mediator, someone who can be the third party to help resolve the issue. So uh, go ahead, Maggie, continue on to the next slide for me. And then also you guys can turn your attention to the Jamboard. We'll be answering questions on slide seven, which relate to this um, slide. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Christina. Okay. So this week, um, try to think about what types of conflict styles people are using when they're dealing with a problem. Um, is it helpful, like create a compromise or collaboration, really work together to solve the conflict? Um, more accommodating, no, it's okay if we do it your way, let's do it this way. Or completely avoidant of the situation, like the I don't know, I don't care, I'm going to stay out of it. Or even worse, <laughs> sometimes, um, if they're more confrontive. So like the shark they are set on their ideas and they're going to push those ideas um so you want to think about the animals of yourself and the people around you kind of the conflict styles people use and how they deal with problems yeah Okay, perfect. So the first question that we want you guys to answer on the jam board, you can use a sticky note, just uh, it's the question, how would you know, or how would knowing your conflict animal be helpful for you in a situation like this? Uh, take a few minutes, go ahead and answer the uh, question, post it on a post it note, you guys don't have to put your initials or anything, it can remain anonymous. I'll give you guys a few seconds to go ahead and complete that. Yeah, perfect. Bringing awareness. And knowing your strengths and weaknesses and communicating perfect i think that's a great example because then knowing your strengths and weaknesses for a situation that presents itself knowing what you can use to help solve the problem or what you may you may need help with from another you know a mediator if need be those are great examples. Knowing your reaction and identify others' reaction types. Yep, exactly. Great. I know as a turtle, oh, whoa, so many notes. Perfect. I love all. Sorry, I'm moving them as well. Thank you, guys. So I know as a turtle, I'm tempted to withdraw from conflict, but this, oh, another note posted. I agree with self-awareness. It's the first step to help manage any challenges I have. Perfect. As a turtle, I... Um, want to withdraw from conflict, but this can just draw it out. Best to face it with courage and try to solve it and make a win-win out of it. Out of it instead. Yes, completely agree because I am a turtle as well. Okay, answering the second question, what or sorry, would understanding conflict animals help you to become a better mediator? Yes. If so, why? No. If so, why? Perfect. So it helps. <laughs> yes, being able to identify characteristics. Absolutely. Awareness, importance to tune in how participants react. Yep. It being very observant and aware of how they react to the situation and knowing the different tools and resources, how can you help them get to the um, compromise solution? Understanding the different styles are helpful to navigate and understand how to help each person be a better, um, being better at hearing the other and also being better to support the other person. So I see a lot of yeses overall. I think knowing the different conflict animals are very beneficial for someone who is a mediator or to be a better mediator. That's kind of what I'm concluding from this. Okay, I think that is it and the end of our presentation. I thank you all for coming and um, participating in our little group Jamboard and for all your responses. I appreciate all the participation and thank you so much for coming to listen to us.
Does anyone have any questions? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have a question in the audience right now. How would you recommend helping people who have different conflict styles? Maggie, I don't know if you want to answer that or I can, it's up to you. I can give an answer and then if okay. you think there can be more added, yeah. Um, I personally do this a lot. So I think that it's important to really use the I feel statements to get um, the basics of where everyone is coming from. If it does sound like in their statement, especially if they are an aggressive person, like in their conflict styles, of course, um, that they want exactly what they want, that's just what's gonna happen, then it can help to kind of say, well, I feel um, upset when my needs aren't being met in this specific situation. Um, so you really need to get that basis. And then once everyone's on that same page and they understand where everyone else is coming from, um, you can talk about a couple different solutions and see how people react to that. Um, especially if they are withdrawing, you kind of have to make them talk a little bit. And that's what um, we do, especially in me mediation, is when we do separate people, um, we ask how they feel about it. And like those intro questions, what do they want to see happen? Um, and then once they get together, we have better control over the situation and how they interact so that we can prevent any sort of withdrawing or um, teddy bearing. So trying to let them get their way um, or being too aggressive if you're a shark. Yeah. I love it. That's a perfect answer. The only thing I would add is sometimes time, giving them a time. So maybe a break saying, let's take 10 minutes and think about this alone and then come back. But always having that time frame of we're going to come back at this time to talk about and resolve it. Thank you so much for that thoughtful uh, response. I, I think, uh, yeah, sometimes just, you know, allowing people to speak and hearing them out is so powerful. So thank you for all you do. Um, and let's see if we have any other questions from our audience today. <clears throat> I seems like you all are pretty thorough. Uh, so thank you again. I just want to express my deepest uh, thank you to Maggie, Christina, Shelley for providing us this amazing skills workshop and for sharing uh, more definitely upcoming skills workshops over the next month of April. Um, I actually every Thursday is a time for us to connect with Kailua High School Peer Mediator. So thank you for uh, making that happen with us this April. I uh, truly appreciate your insights into peer mediation, your approach as peace builders and conflict resolvers, uh, but definitely mostly uh, your passion, just your kindness in all that you do. So thank you so much uh, for all of this. Uh, last but not least, thank you to all of you for joining us today's webinar. We deeply appreciate your interest and support in joining us to learn about peer mediation programs throughout Hawaii at the 34th Annual Peer Mediation Conference, Adventures in Peer Mediation. Uh, friendly reminder, we have 10 more events left in the conference. So thank you all.